eyes now on Instituto de Cultura Raices de Peru. Uh, this yeah. group created in 1988. They've got 12 chapters scattered around the world with the goal of passing down Peruvian traditions, native languages, and folklore to younger generations. And their theme really is a nod to the dance of the descendants of the Inca Peru culture. It's called El Pacacito, which has a deep meaning related to solidarity and protection, as well as joy and falling in love. And we're gonna see them performing in groups and then alternately as couples characterizing courtship. You can also hear various instruments, guitars, violins, mandolins, the float decorated to represent the Peruvian culture. So characterizing courtship, the dances, they, they're flirting a lot with each other. Oh yeah, it's like when we're talking about, you know, uh, going around, uh, I remember go, growing up and going to dances and that was part of uh, talking about cumbia. There was w one particular song that it was a, a flirtation song that you got to flirt with whoever you were dancing with. And <laughs> you made sure you wanted that person that you wanted to dance with <laughs> so you could flirt with her or she could flirt with you. <laughs> well, my two favorite cumbia partners growing up were my uncle and my cousin, so that wasn't happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, I remember, because my mother's from Nicaragua, and she told me a story one day that she used to go to dances and she used to have a dance card and they would, the band would give out a list of all the songs that they would play in order. And men used to come up and say, could I dance song number four with you? Oh. And my dad, that's how he met her because he, there was a particular song that he would ask her, you know, to dance with. And that's how he, you know, made her fall in love with him. Aww. She's. You know, there's that expression, her dance card is full. Yeah. It means he's all signed up, buddy, move on. All right, and McEvick's dance card is full, too. Uh, hey, Ann. Yes, and Jasley here took a break from dancing to talk to us. Tell us what it means to be here today. Honestly, it's such an honor to be here to express my talent and our special culture that we have. And I think the festival does a great job in hosting all these different cultures and just explaining and we're capable of just showing and showcasing our talent. And it's just Wonderful. So you grew up here in the U.S., but your family is from Peru. What do you want people to know about the Peruvian culture? Um, what I want them to know is just how every culture is different, and I just want that even though like the U.S. is made up of so many cultures, you can appreciate every single one of them by just like admiring like the festival today. Absolutely. Tell me about your costume. So our costume is from Buda, a district in Peru. It has right here the, the district flower, um, as well as well as right here, and then it co contains many colors because it's a very like carnival type of dance. It is gorgeous. Have Thank fun. You so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, that's an example of how nothing's by accident. Every color, every piece of their costumes represents something that might be symbolic of, or tied to a religion, or it may mean something like as simple as the village that, uh, from which they come. It all means something. And that's what's so beautiful, that it's not just, you know, getting a bunch of rags together and, you know, or, or, or uh, patterns uh, of material together, but it's, it's significance, you know, and, and in terms of the ceremonies, the same things is like feathers, for example, there are certain feathers uh, Aztec dancers use, and then, for example, in Brazil, the uh, dancers, they use certain feathers, you know, so it, it's significant. Uh, even the hats, and to some e even use uh, sh uh, certain types of shoes, or like the women use certain types of high heel, you know, because when you dance down these streets, or you go barefooted, you know? Sure. I want to do that in the Mission District, right? <laughs> any district, frankly. In any district. <laughs> in any district. <laughs> in any district. <laughs> well, up next is uh, Willie Brown Middle School Steel Pan Ensemble, and that is sponsored by Lyft. So we are seeing a banner uh, from Lyft there. And uh, they are accompanied by Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews.
At Willie Brown Middle School, located in the Bayview, they're a STEM school with an emphasis on coding and robotics. Their musical director, Ben Kosilak, teaches the steel pan ensemble, a style that originates from Trinidad and Tobago. And it's fascinating to see these young people. I spent some time with them at the school as they were practicing the steel pan. That's an, a, a unique instrument, and yeah. usually that passes down through the generations. But here it is in our schools. There are kids who've never had any contact with a steel drum, and look at them go. And that's actually, this is the first school that's teaching steel pan uh, in San Francisco. And now there's going to be other schools that are going to be uh, teaching uh, steel pan. I know at Mission High School they're going to start a program. And if you go back to the roots of the steel pan it, in Trinidad, they banned it using conga drums and drums from Africa. The government did because a lot of times they would uh, send uh, messages through the drumming. And so they banned it, the, the conga drum and so they started uh, uh, drumming on steel. They got around it. And that's how they eventually created the steel pan. Wow. Well, up next is uh, Maracatu Pacifico. So let's welcome them there, a community-based performance group out of West Oakland, bringing music and dance from northeastern Brazil to the Bay Area. And Ann Makovic has one of the participants. Ah, yes. Now, you have been spinning and spinning and spinning. How do you how do you keep this from being dizzy? Uh, practice and <laughs> arm workouts. Absolutely. And what does your flag represent? It's a standard escandade to Portuguese. It's our group. This is their fourth year in Carnival, San Francisco, Maracatu. It's a popular uh, folkloric tradition with roots going back to the colonial era and the heritage of enslaved Africans. This year they're honoring the Maracatu group's historical resistance through the royal court procession. They're all representing the Orishas that embody peace, wisdom, and fight for justice. Orishas, the goddesses, the gods, the deities. Maracatu Pacifico founded in 2012. They draw inspiration from both traditional Maracatu nations and more modern, non-traditional Maracatu groups. And keep in mind, this is a group from Brazil. This represents the variety that Brazil brings to the table. Later you will see the Samba Rio, the very decorative modern style. These folks right well, here... look, we have royalty here. There we do. <laughs> Let's listen in for a bit. Danza Hijos del País. They are making their way down the route now. The beautiful colors of the costume. They are a grassroots cultural dance group founded in 2011, and their main objective is to, uh, to promote and share their culture through dance. Hijos del Maíz, the children of the corn. Their theme, Así es Nicaragua. This is Nicaragua. Today they're representing their national bird, known as... El Gardan Barranco. Okay, nice, Joe. It is colorful. It is easily recognized by its long tail with the blue feathers. And the group organizes an annual presentation of Nicaraguan dance, music, and poetry where the community can learn more about their homeland. Yeah, what's cool is that they not only entertain, uh, but they've also created a community where young people, children, and even the parents, they've been able to learn and really appreciate the culture. And you know, it's beautiful in Nicaragua because there's, again, there's a mix of uh, Africanos that live in a section called Bluefields, which is on the Atlantic coast. And they do, that's where the Palo de Mayo dance or, originated from. 
And then you go across, you know, to other parts of Nicaragua and you have different types of uh, uh, music and, and dance traditions. I've been to Nicaragua because, you know, my mother's from uh, Chinandega, actually from a small town, but I've been to Manawa and Masaya and other parts of Nicaragua. And it really took the time to really learn and study, you know, all the different traditions. All right, well, let's go back to church because this next group, <laughs> the Church of Eight Wheels, only in San Francisco. These guys celebrate life by roller skating. And you know, they've been at it for 40 years now, which is amazing. And their float is always amazing because they have a 15 foot roller skate that we're gonna see in just a few seconds. You've seen these folks, they skate all around the city on a Friday night. They go out en masse, they turn the lights on, some of them uh, roller skates with lights. <laughs> and they just are up and down the Embarcadero and all around uh, winding through Golden Gate Park. The theme this year, celebrating Carnival on wheels. Why not? Why not? The skaters, they represent the free-flowing spirit of the city, floating along the route today on wings of gold. And there they are. Look at that. Can you skate like that, Roberto? I actually went to the church because I know the artistic director, and he had been trying to get me to go to the church many times, and, you know, I'm just so busy. But I finally went to the church last year, and, oh, my God, we had a blast. I hadn't roller skated in I don't know how many years. I fell a couple of times, I got to admit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, okay. It's a skill. It takes a lot of coordination to make that happen. <laughs> you know, and if you ain't falling, you ain't skating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. Tell us about the Church of Eight Wheels. The Church of Eight Wheels is a fantastic place on Sal and Fillmore. You need to come out, try on the skate. This is D. Church. We worship a funky good time every single time. We are the energy and the spirit of San Francisco that everybody thinks has left, but it hasn't left. We just put it on wheels and we take it everywhere that we go. So anytime that we get a chance to do it, we're there. Yeah, no, so you, you see these articles saying, you know, the culture of the city has changed, it's lost its soul. You say that is not the case. That is not the case. It's only the case for the people that feel like they're missing out on what it used to be. Change is inevitable. Things are going to change. San Francisco is going to change. But it's always going to have that essence of having a funky good time. As long as I got wheels on my feet, that's what we're going to do. Awesome. Have fun. Let it roll. We need to get Ann on some skates out there. It's so much fun. It, you know, when I went, it reminded me of being in in the times of disco because they got all the strobe lights and the lights on. I was having like a little flashback moment. <laughs> uh, Top for five, giving us a good shot of the skate. We always love this float. Uh -oh. Dang it, hey, uh, if you ain't falling, you ain't skating. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, have you skated? I skated uh, back in the day. Yeah, I'm just thinking uh, now it's uh, all about getting on a scooter. <laughs> uh, pretty soon you guys are going to have a contingent with scooters. Oh, there's uh, oh, Natalie, Matt, little Nat. That's my oh, granddaughter. This is oh, your granddaughter. Yeah. Oh, she's adorable. Oh, look at her look go. At her. <laughs> Did you teach her how to dance? Oh, this no, no, good. no. She, she, uh, in fact, she's been uh, taking classes with one of our former kings of Carnival that has a dance studio in Santa Rosa, uh, King Victor. And um, actually, she had a birthday party at the studio. And uh, the, the party, we he taught different dances. And we danced hip hop. We did a little, oh, yeah, so we, nice. did a, we did a little salsa. And, and uh, man, it was amazing. It was fun. That was, uh, that was, in fact, that was the first time he did it. My daughter, Angelita, came up with the idea about doing a party there where everybody that came had, yes. had a dance. That's so sweet. <laughs> well, the, That's amazing. The comparsa is called Esforcio, and it means endeavor in Portuguese. <laughs> well, they're endeavoring. My, and, and there's my other granddaughter, uh, 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 Diseña. She's on the float? Yeah, she's on the float dancing. So 
this dance, uh, the music they're dancing to, it's called Ashe. This is from Brazil. And the dance and the choreography, it reflects the traditions of Salvador Bahia. So of course the costumes, they're very decorative, like Rio Samba dancers, but they're still kind of laid back. I don't, is this laid back? Well, it is compared to the Rio Samba who are wearing the heels. Oh, sure. They're saying, you know what, we're gonna wear high tops, we're gonna take it easy here. And you know, it's a tough route on high heels. I, I don't know what that's like, but I imagine that's pretty tough. Exactly, and, so they want everyone to enjoy the experience. Yeah. So comfortable shoes, that's a big part of it. Ladies, we uh, know that. All yeah. walks of life too, all ethnic backgrounds here. And so Roberto, you mentioned and uh, your granddaughters, your sister, is also part of this comparison. And my cousin and my niece, Erica, is in it, and my daughter, Angelita, is in it. So it's, it's uh, I got quite a, a huge amount of uh, family members. Nena, my other daughter's in it, and so yeah, it's, uh, I uh, I hear about it all the time. Uh, you know, one thing I find I interesting, <laughs> your sister, part Nicaraguan, the other family Founder Christy Costello, she is uh, Irish. There's not a single Brazilian in this, in this whole comparison as they celebrate Brazil, which yeah. is not the only contingent yeah. that has a lot of dancers that represent a particular country with nobody from that actual country. All right, so we want to look at hip hop for change right now, making their way down the route. This is their second time in Carnival, and uh, the theme is, of course, hip hop for change. They're a nonprofit. They use uh, grassroots activism to educate people about socio economic injustices and they advocate solutions through the hip-hop culture and of course the theme is hip-hop culture and all of its elements so that's DJ that's breaking graffiti and MCing. so that's what you're seeing on the float here you know, not too long ago, when I was in high school, hip hop was a newer marginal music. Yeah. Today, it is the popular music. It's no longer on the margins. You know, everything else is on the margins from hip hop. Here it comes. Uh, right out, following after them is one of my specials. Is the annual Carnival Royalty Competition, where we elect the king and queen. And this year, as you know, Joe, we elected the uh, first drag queen for Carnival, but this year's our our king is just amazing, and our queen, they're just... Yeah, Queen Ebony Barnett. This is royalty right here. Yeah. This is with sisters with style. King Carlos Serum Pruitt studied with Ritmo y Sabor in Colombia. Both of them just tremendous dancers, tremendous ambassadors for this program. And we don't want to forget about Teen Queen Elani. She is a dancer with rising rhythm. She's performed in the 2019 Mardi Gras kickoff and the 2018 Carnival San Francisco Grand Parade. So that was last year. Yeah. Ania Smith, the princess, Aiden, Prince, they also join on that float, sponsored by Uber. And now, the oh. next float, now this is, he's also royalty, right up there with the king and queen, but he gets his own float. Mama Dora. She. She. Mama Dora. Mama Dora. <laughs> Mama Dora. Oh, uh, I tell you, when I was at the competition and I saw Mama Dora compete, I just had a feeling Mama Dora was going to win. She was amazing. So <laughs> she beautiful. is a character. Uh, Look Mama at her, Dora. <laughs> she has a larger than life personality. She comes to, uh, born in Mexico City, raised there, has been here 20 years. She is a, a drag queen all around San Francisco of some notoriety and when she is on the stage she is at home and there is a not a larger stage than this right now not a larger Francisco. stage than Carnival yeah. but also check out her float this float was actually a part of Burning Man yeah. came straight from Burning Man look at that art car that is spectacular Roberto having a drag majesty that's a, a new concept, uh, and it's an only in San Francisco thing. In fact, this may be the only parade, it's definitely the only one in the city that has royalty, king, queen, and drag queen, and maybe the only one in the country. It's the only one in the country, and it's a, a new tradition we started uh, to honor our LGTB community, you know, and to be inclusive of them. And I've been wanting to do it for a, for a while, and I, with our production team, and our volunteers, we, we went through a process and and we a actually went to, to the community and asked them for support and their blessing. And they get guided us in terms of putting 
the uh, the contest uh, together, and they were involved in the selection uh, that's and great. the judging. Yeah, we are we are happy about that. All right, we're going to go to Ann right now, talking to the crowd. Hey, uh, yes, we have hundreds of people lining 24th right now, the Latino Cultural District here in the Mission, and one of them is Misha from Vallejo. Her first time. Why did you decide to come? Um, my friend brought me. Santa had brought me. Uh, she had been before, so it was my first time. I wanted to come, and I had somebody new in the parade. Okay, and why did you feel as if she needed to come? Because it's a big event. It's fun. There's a lot of people here. It's a new thing for her, and she has a friend that's dancing. Awesome. So what do you think of it so far? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love the culture, and I love all the costumes and everything. Mm -hmm. Everybody having a good time? Yeah. All right. It's <laughs> very good. No, we are. The, uh, the, the Everybody's really thankful for the weather, I think, at this point. The sun is shining here in the district, Mission District, and the party continues, guys. And you are in the thick of it, dancing with some of the comparses. We see you out there. This is a spectacular comparsa, and I, I really like these folks. I was at the rehearsal the other day. Cuba Caribe Carnaval. Note the rumberas. That's what they call the dancers in rumberas with their ruffled sleeve. The dancers of the traditional rumba music of Cuba. Yes, the float has tropical themes with those bright and festive colors. So they really, really catch your eye with those colors. Uh, they say they are representing Santiago de Cuba, the biggest carnival on the island. And technically, this is their first year in carnival, but this contingent is made up of carnival veterans. They came together from all kinds of different groups, and they decided to form their own group. And these are amateur dancers who love the Cuban culture. They reached out to professional dancer Ramon Ramos, a dance leader. He's taught them the final points of the Cuban rhythm and the movement. They took a contingent to Cuba this year. They did not mess around. Cuba Cariba Carnival said they found the power of healing through dance and music. Viva San Francisco! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Next up, June Jordan, School for Equity. As a school for social justice serving working class communities of color, they say their mission is not just to prepare students for college, but also prepare them to be agents of positive change in the world. And the way they do that, the school's founded on four values, respect, integrity, courage, and humility. And it spells out rich and you will see a representation of rich. Respect, integrity, courage, and humility. We all hope to pass along some of those values to our own children. They welcome and encourage all people to participate, in becoming part of a larger community of acceptance, compassion, and love. And they say they are all about having fun and being liberated through music and through movement. So it's so nice to see young faces. This is the only way Carnival will continue for another four decades is to get the young people involved and to have it pass the tradition onto their families. Anyway, it's great. This is, you know, a new school participating. And they, they're small now, but I'll tell you, I know the artistic director, and this was a vision of hers, and I know she knows a lot of people, and this is one school that's going to grow. I could even the little ones are out here. Uh, my dad would drag me to ethnic festivals when I was a kid, and I got it. At the time, I got it. I, you know, you don't see people <laughs> rolling their eyes at their parents like, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> They're participating. Yeah. They're having yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, this is a lot of fun. All right, this is exciting because this is a newcomer this year to Carnival. Yes. 
Carnivalescos. And I like their name, Carnivalescos. Not just their first year in Carnival, first year in existence. And their theme is Newborn Revelers. It's a dance based on African-Brazilian samba forms that they're doing right there. And straight from Brazil, the music called Afro Beats, which is a modern African-based pop music from Nigeria and Ghana. And let's take a listen. Afro Beats, put that on your playlist. It's the newest rage. It truly is. The costumes, too, are so beautiful. And they're inspired by the Carnival traditions of Trinidad and uh, the Caribbean, uh, they're basically swimsuits, right? Highly decorated with those long feathers and of course the shiny accessories that really catch your eye. And I love it because the colors of gold and white, they symbolize a new beginning, a new energy. And that's so appropriate for Carnival's newest group. And Trinidad and Tobago, they have their own Carnival tradition down there. They take it very seriously. Uh, right, uh, they will be represented in several of the floats. All right, Anne is along the parade yes. ride. Who are you talking to? I'm here with Stephanie, who is dressed very appropriately Yay. for the carnival. Tell us about your costume. in a lot of cases. And then to coordinate having that headset, I tell you, I was in Trinidad one year, and I got invited to be their guest for their parade, and they surprised me, and they had a costume for me, and I never wore a headset. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a minute to, to kind of learn just how to maneuver it, yet alone dance with it. <laughs> well, I'm impressed, it so I'm impressed just by the headdress alone, but also with that wind blowing, that makes it even trickier. Yeah. All right, well, hey, these costumes are getting hot just in time for Los Bomberos de San Francisco, the fire department represented here at Carnival. These are Latino firefighters in the San Francisco Fire Department. They do bilingual translation for the department, as well as other duties like putting out the fires. Los Bomberos, they've sent members to fire stations in Mexico, Nicaragua, bringing equipment and helping with all of the training there. And they've participated in Carnival for quite some time, for 13 years now. <laughs> so they're getting into the Carnival spirit right now, throwing beads. They're throwing a lot at you, Roberto. Yeah, <laughs> well, see how accurate they are. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of them, you know, and it's because I grew up, you know, here, and so many of them uh, are now, you know, firefighters. In fact, one, one, one of them pulled up on the truck one day to come by real quick to uh, drop off his application, and my, uh, my, my fire alarm was beeping, and he goes, you need a new battery, and he changed it real quick for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, up next is Telemundo 48 and Comcast Xfinity. They are going on the parade route right now. They are one of our parade sponsors. The float theme, Vive la Pasión del Fútbol. Telemundo is starting their summer of soccer June 7th with the 2019 Women's World Cup in France. And then June 14th, Copa America in Brazil. Their goal. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love goal. that. only breaking news station in Spanish in the Bay Area. They participated in Carnival for 10 years, Telemundo 48 and Comcast Infinity. Telemundo viniendo a tu mundo. La Copa. Adiós. 
Oh, you see, that song makes me dance. And speaking of cumbias, that's what we're hearing right now. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it. Mm -hmm. All right. And we have a big group coming up right behind. So this is, uh, while well, we're seeing the Telemundo truck. All right, right behind them, a group that represents the fusion of cultures. Now this is Mask Makers <laughs> Massive with Pai Shao of one of the original parade comparsas, Mask Makers Passive, Massive, and they have brought in Pai Shao, a long time entry into the Carnival San Francisco, and they have been delighting spectators for decades. Yes, they have. We know, we know when they're coming down the parade route, right? We just saw a banner that said under the Caribbean Sea. That is their theme this year. So the dancers, when we see them, they are all dressed as mermaids and seahorses and jellyfish. The underwater world is all on colorful display. Now let's talk about the name of the comparison. Mass refers to masquerade, people in costume, parading in carnival. Makers, because they actually create their own carnival costumes and massive, a slang term for the people. And they are joined by the Peixão Dance Ensemble. So Peixão, the word, it's Portuguese for passion, and it was founded in 2014. They've been around for Carnival for many years, and it's so beautiful is that this year, both of these groups merged together to do something very, very different and unique. And I'll tell you, I've been, like I was sharing earlier in Trinidad, we went around the parade route. At one point, we got off the parade route and went and picked the group up who joined us, and we jumped back to the parade. <laughs> All right, we're talking about two completely different types of, of uh, entries at Carnival. Yeah. We talked two histories, Brazilian and the Caribbean, and they have managed to merge it together here. Well, you know, a lot of the Trinidadian uh, comparsas in Trinidad wear the, the Brazilian-style costume. Yes. Okay, Anne is with one of the dancers in the parade. Hey. Oh, they are bringing it. Tell us about your music. Yes, We all live from Trinidad. This is what we do best. We grew up in the islands, migrated from Africa, and we create the rhythm. A rhythm. So far, rhythm. What do you want people to know about Trinidad? We want people to know somewhere you can come on a vacation and come and relax and have fun. And don't forget the Trinidad Carnival. It's the best in the world. Ooh. Come to Trinidad Tobago, the best in the world. I'm sold. I'm booking Trinidad for my next vacation. Have fun. Obviously, that's what it's all about. <laughs> uh -oh. Ooh, get it in. <laughs> I think she just found herself a sailor. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> he's teaching her some moves. That's awesome. She, she's going to take him, take, he's going to take her back to Trinidad with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need her here, Roberto. This music, soca music, soca from Trinidad and Tobago, a distinct type of carnival music, very high volume. Let's listen in. This is a trademark of this particular group. And a very interesting challenge today because the winds have really picked up. And that thing's probably a little top heavy. But the dancer who is manipulating that, uh, that puppet, he seems to be fine. He's just Doing bopping on well. down 24th Street right in front of us. Doing and, it very well. And they are very popular, the puppets. Uh, when I was in Trinidad, I got to meet several of the puppet makers in Trinidad, and I was just amazed of uh, the work that it takes to make them. But most important, to be able to maneuver them, it's a skill that you have to, you know, a lot of hand, feet, coordination. 
All right, let's check in with Ann now. Who are you talking to, Ann? Yes, Anne? I am here with my new friends from Dixon. Hello. Yay, hello. How are you doing? Why, did, why did you guys come here today? We're off and we just want to have fun. You know, this is the place to be right now. Uh huh. What do you think of the parade? I love here. I've been coming for 15 years. I absolutely love it. 15 years. It's 15 only years. getting bigger and better. Exactly. What, right what's on. your favorite thing? Uh, the Caribbean dancers, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just saw And the saw Brazilian them. ones, too. Brazilian girls. Uh, but... The costumes. He <laughs> likes that guy who's shaking his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was looking for. Uh -huh. But it's so fun. I, I, might, I might be here next year. You know, and, yeah, my friend used to dance for the yeah. carnival. So she asked if I wanted to do it. So I said, I'll think about it because I used to do parades when I was younger. Oh, you so, should be doing this. Yeah, it's so much fun. This yeah. is a no brainer. Yeah. You're ready to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. I was born okay. and raised in San Francisco. I've been here for six years, and this is my first carnival. Oh, what I've do always you think? wanted to come, and I'm so oh, glad oh, and excited oh, that uh, <laughs> we're able to make it. It rained a little bit earlier on us. Uh, we all bought umbrellas, and that lasted about five minutes. <laughs> and they got 15 bucks each from all of us. But it's not worth it. Welcome to the Bay Area. Inflated umbrella prices and everything. Back <laughs> to you guys. We're having a great time. His first time, definitely not his last, right? Okay, this is United Rhythms SF. They call their dance style Contemporary World Fusion, and they bring together the music styles of reggae, soca, and cumbia. And their theme this year, Preservación de Cultura La Quinceañera, and there you see, represented <laughs> at the Quinceañera, the celebration for 15-year-olds. They're highlighting their strength in these young ladies by showing how Latino culture celebrates the fiesta de quinceaños on their 15th birthday, and you're going to see some of the girls wearing beautiful tradition quinceanera dresses, but then the dancers, they are wearing something else. And they are. They say their main goal is to uplift and strengthen women who are responsible for our very existence. Did you get that, Joe? Women. Women will save the world. Yes. And they, they gave birth to the world, and they are going to save the world. So oh. they're, they're talking more about women and saying, you know, they're the ones who, uh, like you said, save the world, but they're going to teach our families and communities how to use love and compassion. The group promotes fitness and mental health through dance. They celebrate music and dance from around the world, including this variety of dances. Belly dance, Caribbean, reggae, soca, cumbia, boogaloo, and whatever that is. Hip-hop, Cardi B. Who's <laughs> Cardi B? Okay, with Ann. Send some of our dancers out on the street. What does it mean to be here today? Honestly, it means a lot for us. We are born and raised in the mission, and to us, this is everything. Um, we're going to keep it preserved within the mission district. You know, we have grandparents, parents, our children that are preserved that look forward to this every single year. So, to us, whether we're not lo no longer here in the Mission District or we're here now, this we're is something that we're keeping it alive. We're keeping the mission alive, the feeling alive. La cultura is live, and it is it is here to stay. La cultura pura and the mission. We're here on the map. We're here to stay. Absolutely. We're, no, we're going nowhere. We're going nowhere. We can feel that, ladies. We can feel that in the air. Have fun. Let's turn up the temperature now with Mito Quinte, Samba performers. Now I say turn up the temperature because Mito Quinte means very hot in Portuguese. And this, this is very hot. This year they're celebrating Carnival's theme of culture heals by honoring cultural resiliency and spiritual health as pivotal aspects of Brazilian folklore. I know, Roberto, now we're starting to see the Samba Rio style of dance and costume. Very feathery, lots of glitter, lots of rhinestones. There's somebody with a glue gun somewhere that's run out of glue five times. Somebody's <laughs> mom, someone's grandma, it as they put this stuff together. It takes a lot of time to make those. Let me tell you, I've seen and been, I can witness that um, and the love that goes into making those things. And you see a lot of high heels. 
<laughs> I've always said, boy, I'm going to have to hide on. Yeah. <laughs> and they can walk so long and then Whoa. do a good job. <laughs> Skills. <laughs> Put some skates on it, and you got another high and degree of difficulty. You go. I noticed that a lot of the comparsas, they've got to fit time into a studio, they've got to fit time into a place that will accommodate them as they're making their costumes. And at the center of all that is this next contingent, Mission Cultural Center for Latino Arts. Well, well, before them, we're actually going to go to Northern California Zumba family dance with your heart. We cannot forget about the Zumba community. Uh, this is a group of dance enthusiasts from all over NorCal united in their common goal to bridge the community, get people off their couches, and join the Zumba party. If you've never tried Zumba, get out there and try it. It is so much fun, and you're actually exercising without even thinking about exercising because it's so much fun. The theme this year, it's a direct reflection of Carnival theme of healing through culture and they say they are using their cultural music and dance to heal their bodies and they are also wearing very bright very vibrant colors and that's to represent how happy Zumba makes them feel and of course Zumba and the dancing uh, that's required during Zumba it mixes Latin genres like salsa, merengue, cumbia and also Latin pop I tell you, and it'll get you in shape, I'll tell you that much. I've, I've done numerous uh, uh, Zumba classes and uh, you get a sweat and you feel good. You get, you get, you like, you get this energy, energy it wakes your yeah. body up. It wakes your body up, it wakes your soul, your mind. All right, well, that may be hard to follow, but not for us, because <laughs> let's bring in Aquarela. There you see the Brazilian flag and the dancers therein. Aquarela means watercolor in Portuguese. They're celebrating Lo Beleza, which is an iconic sam samba dancer showcase each year by Globo Television, and she embodies the spirit of Brazilian carnival. And you mentioned television, so the flow, it actually mimics a TV studio set, which serves as the home for the Globeleza dancer. Uh, so the costumes, they're inspired by Globeleza too, the rainbow colors and the patterns, and then carefully beaded in all the right places onto their bodysuits and dresses. Oh, Those look at we have suits. a pregnant dancer on the float as well. It's very common for uh, pregnant women to be there. They, they yes. want their children to be in utero performing in Carnival. So they can say, <laughs> and we call them the, the Car time. Carnival babies. Uh, why not? You're uh, never too young, right? I've, I've seen so many uh, pregnant women that have danced in Carnival. I've seen the children uh, be born. I've seen them grow up, and I've seen them, you know, dance in Carnival and from generation to generation. In fact, Joe, I, you were recently talking to a family that had several generations in Carnaval. Yeah, we're going to profile them in a little bit, but yeah, it, it, and that was just one of many. You know, your mom brings the kids, the kids turn into moms eventually, and you know, you were just seeing your own grandchildren here in Carnaval. Some years it's four generations. See, dancing, you can deal with this wind. You can deal with the coolness because when it gets super hot, when we've had the parade, you got people sweating. Right now, people are feeling real cool. You know? They actually <laughs> like this warm. weather. Yeah, oh, yeah, this is a yeah. little bit cold and blustery yeah. for us. Yeah. They're yeah. loving it. <laughs> That's why I mean we should get up and dance and warm up. Can we? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm with it's you. Carnaval. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but I want one of these costumes. <laughs> well, that's not going to warm you up. <laughs> well, ne next year, we'll have you in the parade. Okay. <laughs> All right, coming up, a California legend. <laughs> it's Zorro himself. <laughs> and oh, watch it. As part of the family tradition, he brings his own son. I guess son is driving. Zorro and Zorro Jr. There we got Adrian Alexander Bermudez and Zorro Jr. 
Adrian Alexander Bermudez Jr. Adrian is actually a community and human rights activist, and he has received praise from former President Bill Clinton, former Governor Pete Davis, and others for all of his work in the community. Not only that, he's also a dancer, a choreographer, and a musician, so a jack of all trades. Pretty good with the sword, too. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves his mark on you. <laughs> Next up, we have the San Francisco Day Labor Program, as well as the Women's Collective of Dolores Street Community Services. This is a grassroots organized program deeply rooted in the community. And they have a dance class and a choir group performing today. Uh, for more than 25 years, they've been successful at uniting, empowering, and organizing immigrant workers for dignified work and also fair wages in San Francisco. And just to mention the Women's Collective, it's a worker-run collective that helps empower immigrant women and then connect them with jobs. So we're talking a lot today about curing, healing. That is part of the theme, right? Well, what do we have to cure? We're not just talking about physical cure. We're talking about a lot of people here. There are a lot of smiles today. But it's a difficult time for the mission as it goes through a transition. And there's a lot of talk about curing ourselves, standing up for each other. Exactly. You know, the people in this community have been uh, uh, going through a lot, you know, because as I talked about earlier about the gentrification, but you know, at the same time, people have, have organized and are, are, are standing up. There's over 7,000 people that, because of the organizing that's been going on, because of the organizing that's been going on, have, have been able to uh, uh, save over 7,000 people from being evicted. It's also a, a large immigrant population here in the Mission District. Uh, and it, it, these are tough times for folks who have having, been having to deal with the political climate. And we can talk some more about that, but we want to take a short break.